choice and say, come hell or high water, I'm going to be this, then you should not be surprised when you are that. And I gave my soul to this game. There's nothing more I could give. Nothing. But I'm telling you, it goes by fast. And if you don't give it your all, you're going to regret it. I love what I do. And it's as simple as that. What does love feel like for you? What does love feel like? So I think I'd describe it as a beautiful journey. You know, it has its ups and downs. Things are never perfect. But through love, you continue to persevere. And you move through them. You move through them. Through that storm, a beautiful sun emerges. Right? And inevitably, another storm comes. And guess what? You ride that one out too. So I think love is a certain determination and persistence to go through the good times and the bad times with the someone or something that you truly love. You know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old, and I scored not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it and being upset about it, and my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm gonna love you no matter what. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. There's a choice that we have to make as people, as individuals. If you want to be great at something, there's a choice that you have to make. We all can be uh, masters at our craft. But you have to make a choice. And what I mean by that is, um, the inherent sacrifices that come along with that. I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player, everything. So when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library. The Mamba mentality simply means trying to be the best version of yourself. That's what the mentality means. It means every day you know, you're trying to become better. And it's a constant quest. It's an infinite quest. I want to be one of the best basketball players who have ever played. Okay, how do I get there? And every decision I made in my life was centered around the process of helping me eventually get there. Like you're always going after it. Always going after it, always going after it. And if there's a challenge that ensues, oh good, I want to see how I stack up to that. So I had that purpose. And once I had that purpose, every decision that I made was centered around that purpose. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. You always want to outwork your potential. As hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. So you go after it, you go after it. What I've learned is to, to, to always keep going, always. You know, there's, there's been times, particularly early in my career, where it just feels like this is the end. But what I've come to find out is that, you know, no matter what happens, the storm eventually ends. And when the storm does end, you want to make sure that you're ready. Man, I gave my soul to this game, man. I, I, there's nothing more I could give. Nothing. You guys know that you know, if you do the work, you work hard enough, dreams come true. You know that, we all know that. But hopefully what you get is the understanding that um, those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. Um, that is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Every kid, every person has the ability to put one foot in front of the other, right? So like if you're saying, okay, I'm gonna climb Mount Everest, and you're at the bottom of the mountain and you look up and you're going, I'm not gonna climb Mount Everest, <laughs> right? But if you break it down into sections and you just one foot in front of the other, one step at a time, next thing you know, you're at the top of the mountain. So like as a kid, I said, I wanna be the best ever. 
right? And now you go through your life and everything you do is try to be the best ever, be the best ever, be the best ever. And as you get older, you start understanding that those things are very superficial things, right? And everybody has a different opinion about it. No matter what you do, I can win 20 championships. There's always an opinion on who's the best. Everybody has different opinions. And so I started really kind of understanding, maybe that's not the important thing. Maybe the important thing is to, you know, how do we as a team grow? How do I help my teammates be better? So that was the first change for me. And then as I got older still, it became more about how are you inspiring others, right, to find themselves. That is the ultimate championship. How do you use your passion and use that to inspire somebody else to create their passion? And then how can they pass that on to the next person? That is true success. The lesson I cherish the most is how important it is to love what you do. Always seek out things you love and always work hard once you find it. You can't stop people from trying to limit your dreams, but you can stop it from becoming a reality. My mind can handle the grind, but my body knows it's time to say goodbye. And that's okay. You asked for my hustle. I gave you my heart. This is what we talk about all the time. You know, you have a bump, bump in the road, you fall, you get back up, and you go after it again, right? That's, um, that's what we do.